Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week we find out, did I get something that was good or did I get something that was junk? And what I'm talking about is the surface grinder that we picked up at auction a few weeks back. Today is the day that hopefully we will find out whether it is good or garbage. We've got to change the oil in it, clean out the oil system, run it through its paces. Hopefully we have time to get that done with the with the limited time that I have, but we'll find out one way or another, that's for sure. So thanks for watching, and let's go see if this thing's gold or garbage. So here's the unit in question, and that is a Brown & Sharp 618 MicroMaster surface grinder that was picked up at auction a few weeks ago. You guys may have seen the video where I brought it in here and unloaded it. And if this grinder's good, it's gonna be taking the place of my other grinder. But I have to run it, run it through its paces, and see before I can, you know, Get rid of the other one or this one we'll see now this thing was shipped with no oil in it or very little oil in it so we have to pull the front cover clean out the oil sump really quick put in just enough oil to test run this thing run it through its paces see if it's any good and if it is if it does run and does its thing we will probably surface this chuck super quick if we can yeah, and then grind a set of uh, test blocks on it if everything works out good. We still gotta stick power to this thing and all sorts of stuff. So let's get started by pulling off this front cover, cleaning out this old oil sump. So while I'm pulling off this front cover, I wanna to touch on a couple things. Now I haven't been posting quite as regular as I had been in the past and it's not, from, not for lack of trying, that's for sure. You know, I've just been super busy and us as a family, the Summers family, have been dealt a lot of unexpected issues uh, lately so you know just know that we're trying it's been either health wise financial wise just personal issue wise just one thing after another and i'm hoping that all that'll clear up and uh, you know it just doesn't take much when you are the sole provider for a family to really throw a monkey wrench uh, into the into the deal so just know that hopefully everything will get back on track here before too long so shield your eyes i'm about to turn on the blaster light and uh, you know, put some light on this situation we got to be able to see down in here while we're cleaning out the sump so i'm going to get something that i can scoop this oil that's left in here out so we can get the bottom of the case cleaned out we, we probably will pull a couple of the filter cartridges and look at them just to make sure that they're not completely clogged uh, before we dump in a bunch of oil so we got cora in here just hanging out laying on her blankets doing important dog stuff she's been really good lately she's becoming not that she wasn't good right from the beginning but she's becoming a very 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 good dog thank you girl So there's your look down in the sump. I got a bucket here. I've got our Scoopomatic 5000, formerly known as a water bottle. And all I'm going to do is scoop out the oil that's in the bottom. I'm not going to try to go crazy cleaning this thing up. Wipe down the inside of the case. You get the idea. Pull this filter cartridge, and then there's one on the other side that we got to pull as well. But just want to inspect them. You know, if everything works great, then we'll go through the trouble of super cleaning or replacing those filters. was a bird just hit the window yeah it's got some water and stuff in the bottom who knows if this has ever been changed Ugh. so that is super nasty in there the designers of this machine thought about this, though. It doesn't pull right off the bottom. The pickup tube is not on the bottom of the casting. They knew that the inside of these machines would sweat. They'd get water in it. They knew they'd get grinding grit in here. So they were smart enough to put the pickup tube off the bottom of the case, actually, by about four inches, it looks like. I think she was due for a change. What do you think? Oh, the anticipation. Let's see, 
it good or is it junk? Let this soak this up while we're pulling these filters. So I'm not for certain that you can even get these filters anymore. But maybe, maybe you can. Just not for sure. Just a woven element. I would, I would think a person could probably get that. Hmm. Almost nothing in that, which is a good thing. I'm sure, the element probably caught everything. I'll flush this out really good. Um, with some uh, some solvent or something. So when you get one of these socket-headed cap screws that's stuck, sometimes just a smack with a hammer, and then drive in your, your bit. Sometimes, most of the time that'll do it. And it did. mostly water. Yeah, I believe that's what this is. It's just a, a filter that collects all the goop that runs off the ways and stuff and kind of filters it before it gets back into the machine. Hmm. Okay. So I don't think these filters are really anything special. McMaster Car I know sells filters similar to this because I use them at work. They're just a fabric string wrapped metal cord filter is all they are. You can see how dirty that one is, how dark it is. That's the pickup filter and that's the return, I guess. So I'm just soaking these filters, kind of squeezing them out. I've got some liquid here that I'm not going to tell you what it is, but works pretty well for most things cleaning wise. I don't know if I'm helping or hurting anything here, but I figure, you know, Get some of the grit off the off the outside of it anyway. So we'll let those dry out, and then we'll shove them back in the machine. So Cora raised a few concerns about what I was doing. You can see she's manning the fire extinguisher, dogging the fire extinguisher. Hmm. Not too bad down in there. I have seen worse. All right, just a splash of my secret solvent. I'm not gonna tell you what this stuff is, because it's a secret. And I'm gonna wipe out this case really good, and then we can dump some oil in this thing, get some power to it, and hopefully this thing, you know, runs like it should. That's what I'm hoping. It does a good job. Those sure shot containers, the pressure sprayer that I'm using, those things are amazing. A must have, really, if you do any any kind of cleaning of any sort. They just work really well. Mm. 
So this back section of the case is definitely the dirtiest and the hardest to get to. You can see, it's still not horrible. Not as clean as the front section. So there's our oil mobile vacu line 1405. They're proud of that stuff. So I'm going to fill up the filter from the pickup here. There's no reason for me to fill up the one from the return. Uh, it only had one hose hooked to it, so it has to be just a return. So I'm going to fill this one up with this liquid gold and then install it and then pour this in. And hopefully it's enough to give us a test run at least. the ground. <laughs> All right, hopefully this is enough for a test run. That's probably going to not work. Let me get a funnel and pour it in where you're supposed to pour it in. So it is above the minimum level and way below the maximum level. This is a 15 gallon capacity. So hopefully that'll work. The pickup tube is down in the in the very back. So it is in the lowest section. So it should be good, I think. So on this cover here, it gives all the wiring for the pump and everything. It's pretty neat. This thing is labeled on top that it's uh, 220, so that's good. That means I don't have to change anything.
So I am just about ready to power up to this thing. I'm kind of excited. Anytime you power up a machine for the first time, it's, it's exciting. So while I was cleaning this up, which I did not show, cleaning up the grinder is not very exciting. Didn't show that. It's not completely clean, but it's a lot better than it was. While I did that, I went over all of the wiring inside the enclosure, just with a screwdriver, checking all of the fittings, make sure that they're tight, and just laying my eyes on uh, all of the wiring. I'm glad I did that because this wire here, hopefully you can see that, that goes from the electrical enclosure into the column and powers the spindle motor, it was in really bad shape. And it didn't look it uh, just at first glance, but you know, while I'm inspecting things, I'm glad I found it. Let me show you how bad it was. It was so bad that I don't see how it didn't short out and possibly it could have and maybe they didn't use this machine because of it. I don't know, but I'll show you how bad it was and I'm glad I didn't plug it in with the cable being as bad as it was. Let me show you at it right here. So you can see that this cable is exposed and it can get oil and coolant and stuff on it and this is the one that was there and check that out how bad that was just waiting for you just to bump it and it would have probably shorted out and who knows, either smoked the spindle motor or just popped a breaker. I mean, it's hard to say. But this was facing down, so you couldn't even see that. But when I grabbed that cable and just, you know, eyeballed it, I noticed that it was in really bad shape. It's really, it's in, it's in bad shape all over. I mean, you could tear it apart with your fingers. It's the way that old wiring just doesn't last forever especially when it's in contact with oil and grinding grit and coolant and you get the idea. Not good. So currently a lot of my equipment is just run with wires to it and they're wire nutted. Not a best long-term idea. So I've got all new plugs and all new sockets for all of my equipment in here. I just haven't had a chance to go through and put them on yet. Uh, here is a really nice screwdriver set. Some of you guys may be interested. I fix it. Nice little tool tray, little magnetic top. I'm not affiliated with this whatsoever, make nothing off of it. It's just my favorite little grab screwdriver set. Got everything you need in here, really nice uh, screwdrivers. This is anodized aluminum. Nice ball bearing top, feels good on your palm. Plus, like I said, got everything you need. So, if you need you a nice screwdriver set, it's even got the small small version, like eyeglasses or electronics. Very, very nice screwdriver set. Everybody's got a set that they like the best, and when I go somewhere uh, outside of the shop, I just grab this and I know I've got everything that I need, basically, screwdriver-wise, in one little kit. Okay, power is applied. I put a mark on this. It should rotate clockwise. Flip on the uh, disconnect. Okay, that's, that's a good sound. No, no pop, no smoke. Um, mag chuck. Piece of steel. Let's see if that works really quick. Why do they got a drum switch on this? I'll never know. And why is it? jammed. Well, that's not promising. Okay, well, that's broken. Oh, <laughs> I really have zero expectations with this machine. I uh, hope that it's good. Um, let's see if the spindle rotates the right direction or rotates at all. That's off. I think I'm good. Okay. I guess it sounds okay. I hear bubbling from the hydraulic system. Hopefully it's got enough fluid in it. It is above the minimum, so... Okay, that is good. Table moves. Not quite as fast as... I would think that it should. Is that wide open? Yeah. Could have air in it. I'm sure it probably does.
Okay, that's re-engaged. I'm curious about this mag chuff. That's, I can't do anything unless that works. Let's, uh, let me figure out what's going on there and then you know, we'll come back to this. Okay. So this, so this thing being jammed is, it's not a good sign, but maybe it's a sign of something wrong. So I guess we'll find out. Okay, I'm here. Huh. All right, that can. Oh gosh. Well, yeah, I would say that's bad. Got a lot of wear on these lugs as well. Well, all right then. We know that's junk. So I'll have to test the output of the transformer. It's got a step-down transformer in there that should supply voltage through this wire to this drum switch. Everything's off right now. The breakers are off, but transformer through this wire into the drum switch into this plug, which goes to the mag chuck. So what I need to do is see if I got 120 volts coming out of this wire See if it comes through the switch into the plug and then check, you know, I gotta trace the path of the voltage and see where the problem lies. So that's what I'm gonna do. So after a little bit of poking around, I believe that the transformer's bad. It's not the original, whatever transformer that they have in there is not the original one. It looks like it's been messed with. So for the sake of this video and saving some time, I just bypassed it. Got 120 volts right here. So let's see. She works now. No, it doesn't. Maybe the chuck went bad. Cooked the transformer. Hmm. Well, that bites. Mm-hmm. Okay, 120 volts to the chuck. It says right here, voltage 115 and nothing. So the chuck is bad and that's not good. Well, that kind of is not good <laughs> that the chuck is bad on this thing. I was really hoping that it would work and it would at least give me the opportunity to grind parts on this thing and further investigate this machine to see how accurate it actually is. But without a functioning chuck on here, I, I can't do that. So I guess I could possibly, I'm not sure, that chuck's longer than this one. Uh, I think that it is. I'll have to measure them and see. But could possibly pull the chuck off the other machine and put it on here and grind it in and then grind a part on here just to see if this thing is accurate enough good enough or worth investing in another chuck for i mean that is a possibility but you know it's kind of a kind of a long shot i, I just don't know so when you buy a piece of equipment assume especially an old used piece of equipment just assume that almost everything on it's going to be bad especially if it's really old and you won't be disappointed when it's not good so luckily there's not a lot invested in this thing so 
it's not the end of the world, uh, but uh, we'll have to see. Let me measure this other chuck and see if it will possibly work on here. But if it's longer than the travel of this machine, I, I can't grind it in. So we'll see. So I come over here to the other grinder. I want to see if this chuck will interchange with the other one. And it is luckily a six by 18. So I'm gonna pull this off, or at least I was gonna pull this off and put it on the other one so I can do what I wanna do in this video and that is test out that grinder. But you ever heard the saying when it rains it pours or getting kicked while you're down? You know, it's all the same, that same meaning. Well, I come over here and I went to flip the handle and this chuck just broke. So what's the odds of that? I noticed, no super surprise here though, I did notice that this one was getting sticky. It was kind of catching, and uh, it was uh, hard to move the last time I did it, which was uh, what, last week I used this thing. So that is not good. Now I got two grinders in this shop, both of which have broken chucks on them. So on a positive note, everything seems to work on this machine minus the mag chuck. I've been sitting here messing with it a bit, running through all the controls, rapid traverse, incremental step over, all of that stuff. Obviously, you've seen the table move back and forth. So all of that stuff does function. I believe the hydraulics are a little louder than they should be simply because the fluid level is so low. And it's also exhausting it's the fluid back on top of the fluid level, inducing a bunch of air in it and making it frothy and making it make more noise than what it would otherwise. So I'm hopeful that if I can get a mag chuck that functions, that uh, you know this thing will grind, whether it grinds accurately or not. You know that's that's what we'll find out uh, in the future. But this mag chuck, no good when it arrived, and my other one decided it wanted to leave the party early as well. Otherwise, it would be on here and we'd grind some parts no matter what. But we can't. So we'll have to finish this video out some other time. But at least. This machine operates, and uh, you know we'll just have to wait for another day to see if it's accurate or not. So check out this nice score of high-speed steel. This came from auction as well, and every piece here, other than a couple, is all Momax Super Cobalt, which is some really nice, high-quality, high-speed steel. And I didn't know, but I th Momax started making some high-speed steel, same Super Momax Cobalt, in Mexico. Wasn't, wasn't aware of that. Um, I checked it on the hardness tester. It tests the same as the others. 7 sixteenths, half inch, 5 eighths, 3 quarter or 19 mil, uh, 3 eighths, 3 sixteenths, eighth inch. Here's some Vasco Hypercut that was bought. Same, same box. And then this which is the biggest piece of high-speed seal that I've personally held, an uncut piece of inch and a quarter Super Momax Cobalt made in Cleveland, USA. So check that chunk of high-speed steel out. I know some of you guys have seen this uh, sitting on my desk for probably some time, but check that out. What a chunk of high-speed steel. Imagine the lathe that you run that in or the planer or whatever. That is a massive chunk. So this was a really nice auction score. And anytime you can find, I mean, you're gonna pay pennies on the dollar for some of this stuff. If you've got an auction near you, that what you'd pay buying just the you know, off-brand stuff off of, uh, off of the internet, you know what I'm talking about. So not that that stuff's bad, I've had good luck with it and I've bought it as well. But this is some really good high quality steel that I am proud to own. I love even messing with it. I like, love the font that they used, that uh, Momax used. It's one of my favorites. All right, guys, that's it this week. I didn't get where I wanted to get in this video. Where I wanted to be is on the surface plate with six test blocks that I have gr that I had ground on that machine and I wanted to know, is that machine accurate enough to stick around or is it gonna hit the road? So we'll just have to wait till another day to, to see whether that's the case or not till we get a functioning mag chuck in the shop. So we'll see. I know that that machine will grind because it runs, spindle runs, table moves. So it'll obviously grind, but will it grind accurately? You know, that's still an unknown. So I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. I've got some neat projects lined up that I think that you guys will enjoy. So that is it. 
thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.